Hello, everybody. This is the Catholic Esquire. Happy Easter. I hope everyone's having a wonderful and joyful Easter season so far. You know, there was a news story over the weekend documenting Francis's Stations of the Cross last week on Good Friday. They document his reflections on each of the stations of the cross. And interestingly, Francis decided to, oh, you know, just delete one of the stations and replace it with another. He decided not to say the uh, ninth station, which is usually the uh, Jesus falls for a third time. He removed that shifted all the stations above that down, and then added in a new 11th station, which was, he called it, cry of Jesus' cry of abandonment. Now, a lot of people got upset by this, and rightfully so. The Stations of Cross has a long, storied history. It's a pious custom. It dates back at least to the 14th century. Uh, certainly, almost all Catholics, regardless of what Mass you attend, is familiar with the Stations of the Cross as a devotion. It's very popular and common to celebrate it every single Good Friday, but also throughout all of Lent, really, especially on Fridays. A plenary indulgence is connected to it. It's a wonderful devotion. It's one of the most important devotions that a Catholic can possibly have. It has a long history, and everyone almost in the Catholic Church is certainly aware of it or has heard of it if they haven't actually participated in the Stations of the Cross before. Now, one would think that that's just absolutely crazy that anyone would decide on their own to just to change up the Stations of the Cross. The Stations are well-known. They've been essentially set in stone, sometimes literally, for centuries. And yet Francis felt the need just to go ahead and randomly change one of the stations. This upset a lot of people. But I'm going to make a, a comment on this in light of some social media texts that came out. One in particular is from a priest who is well-known in social media world, at least on Twitter anyway, but other places as well. He's a member of the Legionaries of Christ. I'll leave you to decide for yourself how much credibility someone who belongs to that organization has. Uh, this particular priest also was a very, very strong advocate of getting certain medications injected during 2020 uh, and told everybody it was out of charity that one needed to take this medication that was tested on dead babies. Um, this individual also said, in response to what Francis did by changing the Stations of the Cross, he said, "Hey, you know what? This is a. It's just a. It's just a custom. It's. It's not. Uh, it's. It's not that big of a deal that Francis changed this. There's. He's well within his rights to do so." It's not that big of a deal, folks. Don't worry about it. Just move on. He, so what? Francis just changed up the stations. Not a big deal. You know, I think there's a lot of people that have that type of attitude, not just about the stations of the cross, but about other things as well. You know, oh, what's the big deal? It's Yeah, we've been doing this in the church this way, but it's not a matter of divine law. It's just what we do. And you know, there's the Pope. He can do whatever he wants. He's the Supreme Pontiff. He wants to change something. He can because he has the power to do so. And who am I to say that the Pope can't change things like this, even if we've been doing things a certain way for years and years and years? You know, you're going to hear that argument quite a bit. I wanted to address it right here and right now. There are two types of tradition in the Catholic Church. And some of you may have heard this. They call it a big T tradition and little t tradition. Big T tradition just refers to uh, the deposit of the faith. This, these are traditions, oral traditions that have not happened to been handed down since apostolic times. 
It is uh, contains dogma. Uh, these are things that we have to believe in order to be Catholics. Example of a big T tradition, of course, would be the belief that the Blessed Virgin Mary was assumed into heaven. Okay. And then there's small T traditions. These are more disciplinary practices, uh, but but they take on they take on a level of tradition because they've been handed down to us over so many years from our ancestors. They're popular, they're universal oftentimes throughout the church, and they gain a certain standing within the church that helps people in their faith and guides them. And we call these small T traditions. They don't have the level of the deposit of faith or divine revelation, but they're very much part of the fabric of the church. And I would definitely say the Stations of the Cross is one of them. The Rosary would be another one of them. Um, When it comes to the Mass, I think the Mass has both big T and little t traditions as part of it. So there's more and certainly more than one reason to be critical of the new Mass because of its uh, how it uh, uh, relays the teachings of the Church with respect to Big T, but also its change in the various prayers and practices and rituals, which may be on the more small T side. But regardless, regardless, it's a real problem. But, you know, let's just focus on these small T traditions, the ones that this particular priest on social media didn't seem to think was a big deal that Francis changed. Let's let's focus on that. What's the problem with changing small t traditions? Tradition is something that's been part of Western Christendom for 2,000 years, the concept of tradition. It involves customs, pious customs. We don't really think of customs in modern day world as law, but in in tradition and throughout history, it always has been. In England, for example, they had the common law. These were not statutory laws. These were court decisions that basically were used as precedent and over and over and over and over and over so many years that it becomes just like a law that has a binding force to it. And This is exactly, or at least very similar, I'll say that, to how small t tradition works in the Catholic Church. And it's a very foreign concept to modern people, especially modern American ears, because we've been so accustomed to the post-Enlightenment liberal notion of how law is is given. And what it is, is the, the sovereign, the legislator has full authority, and it can essentially do whatever they want. And they make statements in the law. We call them statutes. And whatever the statute is, goes. If the statute wants to repeal a prior statute, it can do so. If the statute wants to make up something completely new that's totally foreign to anything that's happened before, the sovereign or the legislator can do that. That's how we understand law today. This notion of customs being passed down over years and years and years, it's sort of taking on a life of its own uh, in a binding sort of way. It's completely foreign to our understanding as Americans because we are completely caught up in the post-Enlightenment, liberal, anti-Catholic, Freemasonic uh, uh, world where highest tradition customs are all rejected. And unfortunately, this notion of how authority works has seeped into modernism, of course. That's why the typical modernist feels that it's not a big problem if the bishops together or the Pope get together and just change the way we're doing things. They call it development, but it's change. But they don't see a problem with that. Because in their worldview, that's guided by these types of anti-Christendom principles, this is totally normal. This is totally what the way things operate now. It's their worldview. It's what they grew up in. It's what they're taught in the seminaries. And so they think it's perfectly fine. Hey, yeah, we do something for 1500 years. We can throw it out. Christ didn't say we had to do this. You know, Christ didn't say you have to practice the stations across a certain way. So in our modern brilliance, we're just going to change it because we think people need to focus more on 
on uh, the the Jesus's cry of abandonment to the Father on the cross instead of falling for the third time. You know, we just think that's more relevant. Do you see the pride that goes along with that, my friends? And Pope Pius X said one of the biggest driving forces behind modernism is, is pride. What could be more prideful than intentionally in front of millions of people and putting in writing, which I will link to as part of this video, putting in writing, just changing the stations of the cross because you want to and you can. I'm just going to do it because of who I am, and I think we need this now. Is there anything more prideful? Is there anything like that, especially when it comes to some of the most pious and well-understood and revered customs like Stations of the Cross? So, my friends, yes, these things matter. These things are important. This isn't something, and I know there's been so many other it's awful things where the actual faith has been attacked directly. But there's also been attacks on these small T traditions by the modernists and Francis. And I think we need to call them out on it. We need to continue to practice these pious customs, these small T traditions. And don't back down from these things. And don't fall for this trick and this lie that just because someone has power means they can do whatever they want. That's from the devil. There is such thing as obedience. But that's not what we're talking about here. Thank you for listening. Please share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Feel free to comment. Provide good or bad feedback in the comments. I do review them and try to respond when appropriate. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.